I got a little the well, clench. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, thank you for watching. It's good to see you, man. Um, well, let's talk about UFC 199. <clears throat> yeah. What happened? I lost, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think you saw it. You know, I came out. I had amazing training camp first off, and I felt really good. And uh, came out. It was a back and forth first round, and I feel like I had him a, a little fatigued. Really? Going into the second. I, I mean, I felt like that. That was the the sense I got. Uh, and came out the second round, and he just caught me about a minute in with like a looping left hook that uh, landed right on the button. And uh, you know, this is the fight game, fight for world championship. I, I got rocked just a tiny bit. Came out of it just in time to land an up kick and start scrambling. But I think I was skating the rest of that that second round, kind of trying to regain composure and and uh, just wasn't. I'm on point after that. I feel like he got more into his groove. I feel like uh, I was less creative and more kind of lulled by his his awkward movement. And um, you know, it was it was a frustrating fight for me. It was still a, a you know, like I said, a, a decision that that definitely went his way. Last time I felt like the fight could have gone anyway. This time I felt like it was definitely his fight. So um, you know, at least at least I had that that I was able to put it all out there and and uh, and take away something from the fight. You can't really remember what happens in a fight, so you go back and watch it. I waited about a week to watch it, and, and uh, I, I still look good, but just wasn't able to, to connect, wasn't able to get creative, and, and really fought his fight. Considering your history with him, considering where you are in your career, was that one of the tougher fights to deal with after the fact? Um. Not necessarily, man. I don't like to dwell on things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's 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 not the best feeling to, to lose, but I'm not defined by wins and losses. That's not what makes me who I am. I, I know that. Um, I love the sport. I Like I said, going into this, this camp, I had an amazing camp, and I, I started coming down from like 163 about 10 weeks out um, just because it had been a while since I had fought and, and – you know, put on some muscle and put on some, you know, little body fat. And, and, uh, you know, by the end of that camp, I felt on point. I felt I was going to win and it just didn't, didn't go my way. So I can't really, the preparation was amazing. Whenever you prepare like that, it's hard to really feel bad about anything, right. you know, because I did what I needed, what I can control. I did. And, and you can't control the outcomes of fights, unfortunately, but, um, I, the preparation was, was on point. And so it, it's frustrating if you aren't able to prepare like you'd like to, and then you have a, you know, excuse kind of, but I don't have any excuses. Who's throwing a ball up and down in front of you? That's sneaky Tommy. Sneaky He's kind Tommy. of a man. How'd you, how'd you know that? I can that? see everything. Are you kidding me? I, I have a nose for these things. <laughs> sneaky Tommy. He's a sneaky little thing, isn't he? <laughs> I love that that's, guy. That's Dash Sr. We call him Dash Sr. That's uh, his son is Dash Jr., I'm assuming. Or maybe just yeah, Dash. Right. Yeah, that's um, Yeah, just Dash. Which, uh, which exotic island?